What's going on everybody? I'm Jason, this is Tennessee Mountain Homestead, and today I'm gonna to try to replace the stock steering wheel on this 200 series mud mower with this aftermarket Grant steering wheel. The first thing I gotta do is remove the steering wheel from the mower, and I already did it, but just in case anyone watching wants to know how to get the steering wheel off a 200 series, it's pretty simple. It's got a center cap that you just pry off with something uh, like a little screwdriver or something. This just pops in there, pries off. I use a 15 16 impact to get this nut off the center shaft. And then you can't just pull the steering wheel off, but we, what I did was we used a gear puller. It's a typical little gear puller, and it works. But the, the center of the shaft is hollow, so we just put a little piece of metal over the center of the shaft for that, for that center piece to push on. And the steering wheel popped, it pops right off pretty easy with the gear puller. The main reason I'm doing this is because some of you might recall a few weeks back, I was driving this thing out one night, going pretty fast around a corner, and it started to roll over on me, and I was hanging onto the steering wheel. This is the one that broke off in my hands as I rolled over, and it broke off before I rolled over. So I was able to pull this one off of another parts tractor that we've got, but I knew that I wanted something stronger for future. So I noticed that the stock steering wheel for the John Deere, it has splines, very similar to a, a car steering wheel, and I figured it might be the same. So this being a Grant steering wheel, I got from eBay, pretty cheap. Um, I ordered the installation kit because it didn't come with it, of course. But this is a Grant steering wheel installation kit. It just came in the mail like 20 minutes ago. So this is the piece with the splines that comes in the installation kit. And uh, as luck would have it, this is 36 splines. It's the same exact diameter, but this is 36 splines and the John Deere shaft is 40 splines. So this ain't gonna work. But I'm not gonna give up. I really wanna put that steering wheel on my mower. So what I'm gonna do is, on the broken steering wheel, I removed the center piece. This is a, it's made out of uh, aluminum and uh, it's, you can see it in this, in this stock steering wheel. That's what's in there. All I did was cut the resin. I cut down with a bandsaw on like three sides and split it open. And it was pretty tough to break this piece out of there, but it came out. And what I'm, my plan is, my plan is I'm going to cut off these, these little extensions so I just have the cylinder. And then I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to find a piece of pipe that this fits down inside nice and snug. And if I have to remove any material or whatever, I will. I'm going to encase it in steel. And then what I'm going to do is drill and tap the steel, maybe in, you know, three places, four places, I don't know. And I'll drill and tap into this also. So that I can run screws through the pipe into this fitting. And then I should be able to weld this fitting with the pipe with the steel pipe around it into the center of this steering wheel. That's my plan. I'm going to go ahead and get into it and I'll take you along with me. I'm just going to use a simple porta band to cut off these ears. I already cut off one, but this stuff's pretty soft aluminum. I don't know if it's cast or if it's probably cast. You can see this these are the pieces that were broken that I got it out of. And this is like some kind of resin or a, I don't know what it's made out of. But it was pretty tough to get that out. We'll cut off this last one. I'll probably use the flap disc to smooth this thing out. Then we're going to go out to the scrap pile and see if we can find a piece of pipe that's going to fit inside. Alright guys, we got our little piece here. It's all clean. Ready to tri uh, figure out what kind of pipe it's going to go into. And uh, we're just taking a little walk through the barnyard and all the pipes in the barn. But it's been raining out here. It rained out here for like two days straight. Just nasty. And it's that mud, that mud puddle out there, all this mud. We're walking on like dead grass right now. But if you were to walk through there, you get taller as you walked. Hey, Duke. Hey, good boy. Come here. Always oh, good boy. Oh, good boy. Enter the dragon. Uh 
Oh, and in here we got some. Uh, this is Ethan's mower that he got. Well, the I got I got this one for parts, and then it, it turned out that, that it ran. It ran for a couple of nights, and then the engine gave up, blew a head gasket. But this thing did run and drive. This one here is a 212 I got from Kentucky about six months ago. This is a parts tractor also. But over here we got the wall of pipe and conduit. You're going to see what this thing is going to fit down inside. That's inch and a quarter EMT. It's a little loose. I'm thinking one inch rigid would be, would be the way to go. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and find a piece and we'll be back in a minute. All right, we didn't have any luck with any of that electrical conduit in the barn. Um, there was a couple pieces that are good candidates, but they're still a little loose. And one inch is too, is too small. Inch and a quarter is just a sixteenth of an inch around too big. So we're going to go look. We have another uh, scrap pile of actual scrap metal in the other garage. We're going to go out and look in there. Birds out. Greenhouse is wide open. <laughs> Alright, this little building that we have here we call the small garage. But this this building right here was the very first structure on this property, like back in the in the early 60s is this was they lived whoever staked out this property and, and made a home here this building was the house but we use it as a garage now well that's what the previous owner did too we keep it as storage for bikes lawn mowers tractors you name it but over here on the shelf is where we got where we keep all our scrap stuff all our steel so we're going to go ahead and see if we can't find something to make to fit inside and uh, be back with you in a minute. Alright, so didn't have any luck in the other garage. I typically just have like electrical conduit from like just leftovers from jobs that I've done. So it's all the same size, nothing's going to work. But I did find this piece of green steel tubing. It's really heavy wall and it's really close. It doesn't fit down inside, but it's, it's just going to take a little bit of work with a, with a flap disc or something to take a little bit of material off of this aluminum piece, and it should fit down inside there just nice. And it's got a nice heavy wall, so what I'll do is I'll cut it the same length as this. We'll just cut a little piece off of there, and then, like I said, we'll, we'll get it to fit inside. We'll drill and tap some, some screws through it. Once that's done... We'll punch out the center of the steering wheel so that this piece of pipe can fit inside of it. We'll weld that. Once it's cooled off and painted, what I'm going to do is mix up a little bit of JB Weld and glue this thing in there with that epoxy and run the screws in it. So that should be a nice permanent bond that I shouldn't have to worry about the steering wheel ripping off of this thing if I ever need to hang on. Alright, so I want to cut this thing just that length off the end of this piece of tubing. And uh, just a little quick tip, if anybody ever wants to cut tubing and wants to cut it as straight as possible without a, without a machine or something, or a chop saw or whatever, what I do is I take a tape measure. In this case, it's a very small tape measure. But on larger pipes and stuff, you can wrap a larger tape measure around. And you just stretch the, stretch the tape around it in reverse. And then that should give you, it gives you a pretty accurate, you just trace right on the edge of it with a Sharpie or something. And that gives you a very accurate, nice square cut or line to follow with the, with the bandsaw, which is exactly what I'm about to use. dropped it anyway and now that should be well it's got a piece of a uh, chip on it but that should sit nice and square 
All right, I got my piece of tubing that I cut off. I got all the, the finish removed from the outside where I'm going to weld it. And now I'm just working on this aluminum piece with the splines using the flap disc just to just take some material away so that it's going to fit in there. I'm going to have to sneak up on it, though. I don't want to take a whole bunch off and then it's going to be loose, you know? I've already been around it once with the flap disc. Let's see if we're anywhere near it. So it just starts to fit in the end of it, but it's got a ways to go. And there's a slight taper to this thing too. So I gotta work more on this side. All right guys, I got this thing ground down pretty good to where it just fits inside. Like that. Next thing I gotta do is I got these little 3 8 long quarter 20s. And I'm gonna drill and tap right through the side of the pipe and into this fitting and the bolt, once it's seated, is not going to enter into and touch the shaft of the steering column. But that should work pretty good. And like I said, before final assembly, I'm going to JB weld this together also. All right, I got the first bolt drilled and tapped in there. And it does not protrude into the shaft area, so it should be all right. I just got to do two more. I'm going to do three. through that's the last one and we're gonna get the center of the steering wheel punched out next and so we can tack weld this thing on and then fully weld it before I weld it I'm gonna take that aluminum piece out obviously so it doesn't melt all right there's our finished hub with the three bolts in it and we're gonna test fit it on here make sure the splines didn't get tore up there it is like I said, next we're going to get the steering wheel punched out. We've got to figure out what size that is and how we're going to cut that hole in it. And then we're going to weld it on. So we got this hydro I got this hydraulic knockout punch. This thing is for punching holes in uh, electrical enclosures for, for conduit connectors. Now this thing is pretty strong. It can cut through, I think, up to uh, maybe like 14 gauge, if not, if not more. I'm going to use a 1 inch. Well, this is one inch trade size, the, the cutter, and this is actually an inch and three eighths. This pipe is just a little bit bigger than this cutter. So what's gonna end up happening is once I make the hole, once this punches through the steering wheel, I may have to file some out of the wheel or maybe just remove a little bit of material off of this with the grinder. Anyway, I don't have to worry about it being concentric because it just so happens that the shaft on this cutter fits perfect in the steering wheel. So it'll, it'll self-center. I'm gonna go ahead and see if this thing's gonna be able to do it. Yeah, it's going right through it. And just like that, we've got our larger hole but I knew this wasn't going to fit in there yet. We got to do something to enlarge it a little bit more. I could have used the next size cutter, but then it would be too big. And I don't know if I can fill that with the welder. All right, we're back. So after a bunch of work with the, uh, the Milwaukee lathe, I was able to remove a bunch of material. If you can see, it's tapered pretty well now. And it also happens to fit the steering wheel pretty good now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get that straight in there and then start tack welding it we'll take out the aluminum center and then we'll fully weld it all the way around all right I think I got it set up pretty good I think I got it pretty square with the back of the steering wheel and I also look I you know I looked at it and it looks pretty good so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tack weld it in a couple places I'm gonna put it back on the mower and turn it and make sure it doesn't do any like you know elliptical things going on so let me go, go ahead and buzz one in I need 
need a better spot to ground it. see what happens. All right, here we go. So it slips right onto the splines like that and I'm fine with that. Yeah, so we're going to go ahead and take the aluminum piece out of the middle. I'm going to go ahead and finish weld this thing. We'll be back shortly. All right, so we're welded on the back and a few places on the front but with all these stock little bolt holes for the steering wheel for the whole grant thing that they have going I don't like the way those holes look and I kind of want to cover them up so I, th I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a piece of sheet metal this is a fat washer but it's too it's a little too fat because I need to be able to knock the middle of it out with a with a with the hydraulic punch so I'm going to take a hole saw about that big I'm gonna drill out a piece of sheet metal right here. And then I'm gonna punch the center out to fit around the center of the steering wheel. And then that piece of sheet metal will be a circle in the center of the wheel here. And you get my, you get uh, where I'm going with this. And I'm, I'll just buzz it in a few, like maybe three places. You know, I'm not gonna weld it all the way around or anything. But just to hide those, just to hide those holes. I think it'll look a little cleaner in the end. All right, guys. I got the I got that washer over the front. It's not the prettiest thing, but we have a solution for that. And I'm ready to reinsert my my splined aluminum center. And I just mixed up the rest of what I had in this little tubes of JB Weld. I'm going to go ahead and add some JB Weld to the outside of this. So when I put it in, it should bond and be a much stronger installation. I can't talk and, and do something at the same time. I'm just not that good at it. So we got the sleeve with the uh, splines back inside. JB Weld was on there thick and then it was also it came out of the threaded holes and when I threaded those bolts in there the JB Weld was all in the threads. So those should never back out, but it's all good. Steering wheel's about ready to be put back on the tractor. And uh, it's not the prettiest thing, you know, but um, you know, we do have a remedy for that. Because just remember boys and girls, a little bit of flat black will make it all go away. Wait for the paint to dry. Ain't nobody got time for that. I put it in the oven, but I put the washer and the nut in the oven, but I don't want to melt the rubber on my wheel. But it's, it's looking pretty tight. All right, so <clears throat> I'm adding a washer fresh out of the oven. The paint's still tacky, but we're going we're gonna to go ahead and put that washer over there. And that washer is going to spread the load of when the nut screws down over the actual steel of that piece of pipe that I welded to the steering wheel so it's not pushing just on that aluminum. So essentially the only thing that aluminum's doing is turning the shaft because it has the splines. But otherwise, if I ever pull hard on this steering wheel, it, it's, it's never going to just rip off of this thing. So you could probably take a, a strap on this right here and pick the tractor up by how strong this thing is now. So as you know, the steering wheel's already been bolted up and we want to do one final touch to make this thing look a little bit cooler. So there's a hole in the center of the steering column. It's like a the steering shaft is hollow and it just fits a 3 8 bolt. It'll slide down in there like that. Now off camera, Stefan took a hole saw, cut out a piece of sheet metal with it and then ground it down until it just fit inside of the stock John Deere steering wheel cap. 
So this piece of metal, this is like a rubber, some sort of a rubbery compound. Well, this piece of metal is it's very tight fit, but we can shove it down in there and then we'll be able to have a John Deere cap. I thought that was pretty cool. There's the finished product, guys. I think it came out pretty good for what it is. That's going to be a wrap for today's video. I know it was a little bit short, a little bit simple, but this thing needed a new steering wheel and now it's got one. So uh, if you're new to the channel, please comment, like, and subscribe. My name's Jason. This is Tennessee Mountain Homestead, and we'll see you on the next one.